All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? I'm Terry Manolio from the National Human Genome Research Institute. Uh, my, I and my co-chair, Neil Shear, uh, are delighted to welcome you to this meeting on research directions in genetically mediated Stevens-Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Um, I thought it might be nice to start off by introducing ourselves around the table. So uh, I'm Terry Manolio. Neil Shear from the... Oh, yes. You and do don't forget to... to push your button. That was, I just did that so you would remember. <laughs> Neil Shear from the University of Toronto. Lois Lagrenard from the FDA. <coughs> Carolyn Hutter from NHGRI. Uh, Wen Hongzong from Taiwan. Lauren Trepanier from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, Sun Hong from Taiwan. I'm Rika Yuli Ulanderi from Universitas YRC Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm uh, Jay Hofnagel from NIDDK. Steve Leader from Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. Mike Paknowski from FDA. David Veenstra, University of Washington in Seattle. Vasant Tantarati from Rama Tipidi Hospital, Mahidon University, Bangkok, Thailand. Manir Pramahamid from University of Lupo, UK. Mike Lee from Riken, Japan, and Academia Sinica in Taiwan. Cynthia Sung from the Singapore Health Sciences Authority and also Duke NUS. Maya Malkenhaupt from Freiburg University, Germany. Josh Denny, Vanderbilt University. Elizabeth Phillips, Vanderbilt University. Vimun Suban Gesa from Thai FDA. Simone Pinero, FDA. Bob Davis, University of Tennessee. Rakumet Mahasri Mongkon, Department of Medical Science, Ministry of Public Health, Thailand. Hi, I'm Steve Katz, Director of the National Institute of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases. I'm Eric Green, Director of the National Human Genome Research Institute. I also want to add my own welcome to all of you, and especially those who traveled far to get here. It's great to have you. I also want to point out uh, our institute's video crew is back there videotaping this. Uh, we're broadcasting live, and we're also going to be video archiving this, um, and which we're delighted to do because we think it's important to have people who can't get to Bethesda be able to either watch it live or watch it after the fact. It is going to be important, though, to make sure that people are using microphones at all times because without the microphone, the video is just not going to pick it up, which makes me wonder how we're going to go around the rest of the room. But maybe, maybe for the introductions, we won't have everybody jump to a microphone. But when we get into question and answer sessions, everybody needs to use a mic. Thanks. Oh, that's a, a great point, Eric. And, and um, uh, unfortunately, I think we'll, we'll skip introductions from the side just because it would be a little too hard to pass a microphone. Um, but welcome, everyone, and we are delighted to have you here. Um, I, one of the really neat things about being at NIH is that we can um, uh, basically, you know, propose a, a topic for a meeting, invite people from far-flung regions of the globe, and, and really have the world's experts convene here even on miserable weather days um, uh, to be able to give us advice on, on research direction. So we very much appreciate uh, all of you coming. Uh, I would note that, uh, that this meeting is, is really a collaboration among multiple institutes and the Food and Drug Administration. Um, these are the various institutes that are, are providing the funding and then of course the, uh, our institute, the Human Genome Research Institute. Um, I, uh, I, I'm sort of charged with addressing a couple of, of important questions, kind of how did we get here, why this topic at, at this time, uh, and uh, also what, kind of, what are the goals of today. And then we are asking you specific questions. Um, where do we go from here? And that's really the, the purpose of this meeting, is to get the, the brightest people that we could, we could find uh, around a table to address that. And a little bit of how do we get there. We, we worry a little bit more about the how after we define the what, um, but, uh, but at any rate. And then, and then you may have some questions for us, so we'll get into a little bit of the housekeeping things, like where are the bathrooms and that sort of thing. So, so we'll get to that. Um, how did we get here? One of the, as I said, one of the nice things about being at NIH is you can call people to address lots of very interesting questions. And we have a series of meetings in genomic medicine or using a person's individual genetic results in their clinical care. The sixth meeting that we held about a year and a couple of months ago in uh, January of 2014 um, was a, a meeting of global leaders, really sort of asking what's going on internationally uh, that could inform our efforts to, uh, to implement genomic medicine. And could we learn from uh, individual models, perhaps in smaller settings that were uh, uh, more 
more efficient and flexible. Uh, so this, like uh, all of our genomic medicine meetings, is videocast and, and uh, archived, uh, uh, thanks to Alvaro and his colleagues. Uh, and so it's on our website. If you can't remember this particular number, uh, which I could see would be a problem, uh, if you just Google uh, NHGRI genomic medicine, it should come up. Uh, and this is the, the group that met in, in collaboration with the uh, Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, we were uh, fortunate in having representatives from 25 countries, including a number of countries that, that we, we don't as, as often have represented in our meetings, and we were just delighted to get this part of the world uh, coming to talk with us. One of the models that was discussed was uh, Stevens Johnson, and particularly uh, our colleague Wasson described the high uh, uh, prevalence of the risk alleles, this particular risk allele, uh, in these parts of Southeast Asia. And, and an innovative approach that they've used using just a, a simple card like a credit card, and he, I hope he'll describe this better than, than I'm doing here, um, that basically has a person's genomic results related to uh, uh, the risk of Stevens-Johnson on them. And you can see here uh, that the, so I need this pointer. So. Um, the, the patient's name, the outcome of the assay, the date, the interpretation, and this particular person is at high risk. Um, and then on the back of the card, further information uh, that this person has this risk allele, and if you need more information, here's who you can contact. This was, was something that seemed so simple and, and so really truly effective um, that it really caught the attention of, of the uh, various groups in the, in the meeting. And, and the idea was then, is this something that one could generalize or at least try to spread beyond uh, uh, Thailand and potentially into in broader parts of Southeast Asia, which I understand is, has been going on in, in other parts in, in other ways, um, and potentially you know, even more broadly uh, around the world. Um, we, when we came back from that meeting, we then sort of looked at what NIH is doing in this area, and it turns out that we have almost zero portfolio in this condition, so maybe two, two or three grants at the most that we're funding, and that's out of the thousands and thousands that NIH funds. Um, so we agreed uh, among a group of, of institutes, uh, since this does touch on multiple, uh, multiple institutes, uh, mandates uh, to, to pull together a meeting, this meeting, uh, to review the current state of knowledge in surveillance pathogenesis and treatment, look at the role of genomics and pharmacogenomics in etiology, treatment, and eradication, and then identify gaps, unmet needs, and priorities. Um, and that's the, the work part of your of, uh, your day today is really getting you to, to address that. Uh, many thanks to the planning group shown here. We, we very much appreciate uh, uh, your efforts, and I think you'll see uh, how effective they have been. Uh, just a quick review of the agenda this morning. You'll hear about the state of the science in, in three sort of keynote talks, and then um, uh, first sort of a first part of international experience. Uh, this includes a working lunch, and I'll say a little bit more about the lunch in a minute. In the afternoon, we go on to talk about case finding. And then we have uh, working groups, and the working groups have already uh, done some work in advance, and we very much appreciate that. Um, on the, the next day, then, we have uh, a second part of international experience, some special topics, areas related to SJSTEN, but not, not uh, specifically that. Again, uh, we make you work during lunch, our apologies, um, and then report of the working groups and wrap up. And, and then we'll have uh, a shuttle to, to take you back to, uh, to either to the hotel or to, to nearby airports. Uh, as Eric mentioned, we have a video live stream. It's being broadcast live, so you may, and you might get caught on, on camera, so you just might want to be aware of that. Um, and there's a link available if you wanted to log on and see what's, what's being shown. Um, and this is very important. Please use the microphones. And, and one of the reasons for going around the table was to give everybody practice at turning it on, and, and also, very importantly, turning it off. So, um, so if I could ask uh, Robert. Robert, thank you. Robert, if you could just turn your microphone off. Uh, Bob, yes. yeah, thanks. Um, that, that's great. That's, so that's the way that you know that it's at, at least I wasn't mumbling under my breath. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> so, uh, yes, ma'am. And then we do have a hand mic for people who aren't at the table. So either come to the table, sort of work your way in, or raise your hand and we'll bring a hand mic around to you. Yeah, we think it's, it's a nice way to, you know, um, stimulate collaboration to actually have you come into the table and, and lean in. Um, there is a floor mic, but it's, it's way over at the, at the end there. But it really is important that you use the microphones, and we'll be relentless about reminding you to do that. So, um, let's see, food. So, food is a very sore topic here, and we are really, really sorry. Um, there, there are certain government regulations. We are a government agency, and we apologize. We are not allowed to pay for meals in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we can't even give you coffee. Um, we, can, we can still give you water, 
Um, that may, you know, by the end of today, it may disappear. So, so drink it now. But, um, but at any rate, so, so our sincere apologies. Um, this is just the state of things. Uh, there is a cafeteria on the first floor. It's a little bit tricky to find. And so I might just ask, um, is, is anyone planning to buy lunch from the cafeteria? Just raise your hands. Oh, you poor souls. OK. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, it's, it is a nice cafeteria finding it. So do you know how to get to oh, yeah. it, Mark? OK. So Mark Williams in the purple sweater will be the pioneer that will lead you down um, to, to take you down to the cafeteria. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky to get out of and then back uh, up here. So and, and we have a, a relatively short break for lunch. So we would encourage you to kind of grab what you can, come back up here, and, and we'll be able to sit at the, the tables here and eat. So it is a working lunch. Uh, those of you who ordered. Um, lunch online, which was no small feat. Uh, the, the first time I went onto that website, it was it was really quite a challenge to, to navigate. But at any rate, um, it'll be delivered up here, and we'll eat here. And, and unfortunately, the, the speaker during lunch will have to listen to our munching. Um, and then we very much hope you can join us for the conference dinner tonight at Bistro Provence. Again, we apologize. We can't buy you dinner. Um, so it's, it's a, sort of a cash only. But uh, please sign up at the registration table by the end of the first break uh, if you're planning to come to the dinner. Uh, and there's a map in your packet for how to get there. So we have a registration desk out front. You probably met Jennifer and Josh um, from Capital Consulting. They will help with logistics questions, any problems uh, logging into the guest network and taxi arrangements if you need them tomorrow. Um, there's a shuttle to the hotel. I believe it's actually the B3 level. Is that correct? Yeah, so our, our apologies. Um, this building is built on a hill, and so every door is like on a different floor, um, which gets in, in increasingly confusing. But it's actually the B3 level if you go down to those elevators. And that will be leaving at 6. Uh, we finish at 5.45. And then we'll pick you up again at 7.15 tomorrow. Uh, and just uh, sincere thanks to the planning committee who did really a fabulous job. Particularly, uh, I have to call out my colleagues Carolyn Hutter and uh, Deborah Colantoni, who, who did just the, the lion's share of the work here. It's really a fabulous job. Um, and then the, we have a working group that, uh, that helped us to identify the need for this conference and, and uh, some of the people to bring in uh, and other institutes that are, that are collaborating with us on this. So with that, um, it's my great pleasure to introduce co-chair. Uh, Neil Scheer from the University of Toronto, and he'll be giving the first keynote. Would you like the? Uh... Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Thank you.